Hey everybody, it's I, Stippling Vaughn, and uh, I'm here at my local bar. You can see the back of the bar right there. So, um, today was, yesterday was a tough day. I did not stream yesterday. Um, we had to put Raja, our beloved cat, down. Uh, yesterday, it was like when we first got up, it was 40 degrees and it didn't feel that cold out, okay? There was no wind. It was just a nice calm day, 40 degrees. It wasn't that bad. Um, it was tough for us. I mean, I drove, she held the cat the entire time. Um, you know, just holding the cat, petting the cat, you know, just being with her for the last periods of time. And then after we got done there and they put her down, we left through the back door and the, the it was so cold and the wind was so strong. It's like, it's like all the warmth in the world was sucked out of us and out of the world. And even though, yeah, we were scheduled to get really high winds and it was supposed to get barely cold, it's just the timing of it, of leaving the vet and that bitter cold, it's just like, like I said, it was just like, the warmth in our world was sucked out of us, was sucked out. And uh, yesterday was tough. I mean, we, it was also, it's like the vet that we go to is like, 45 minutes away and so it was a long drive there and a long drive back uh, we got home and it was a matter of okay now we've got to start now's the time we have to start the, pro the process of cleaning up um, essentially <laughs> erasing her which I, I, it, that, that sounds cold, but it's like one of those deals where it's like, it reminds me of, of, of after my grandfather died. And after the funeral, we all went back to their house. And it was like, grandma was still alive. And it was a matter, it was the, the process of everything around her reminded her of her husband that it was a matter of, okay, clean out his office clean out the office completely, get rid of this, get rid of this. She just, she didn't want those things around her to remind her that her, that the love of her loss was gone. So we had to do the same. Um, I eventually, uh, I, I knew I was going to do this. She knew I was going to do this. Um, I was there for a little bit and then I left because it was just one of those deals where it's like, she was very emotional and she had things how she wanted to do it. And I knew that how I would try to do it to assist her would be in the way. So I came here and I was working on this, working on this beautiful dog drawing. So I was working up here, I was working on the nose area here and working over here. So that's what I was working on yesterday. And what I've been trying to do is when I'm not doing a video, work on areas where, uh, that would be out of out of camera range so that's what I was that's the reason why I I work and now that I'm doing these videos I work in certain areas when I know when you guys are gonna be watching it'll be on camera so like down here I'd have to really like hold the paper up and I don't have much control or areas here where I'm doing this really fine dots um, it's hard to do that when I'm on camera with you because the camera is essentially like in my way. So that's the reason why you get the certain shots that you get when I'm working. So, but I mean, it's just a matter of so of going through and, and of like you know washing all the the blankets because I mean she was not doing well. She was losing bladder control, so we had a whole bunch of blankets we had to wash in some cases just outright throw out. Um, cleaning up the floors and whatnot. So again, just 
it's it's the emotions that go through having to do that. It's like, it's like I said, you're essentially having to do a racer, which is really hard. Um, but the best thing is that fortunately with today's modern era, we have a lot of photographs of her on our phones. Um, we have like we have videos of her. Um, I woke up this morning. And I remember that I had a lot of photos on my old phone. So I did a huge photo dump of, pho of photos of the cat uh, onto my Facebook page, uh, just so just so, just so Miss Stippling could see them and have them, so she could like, uh, so if there's any photographs, she's like, I, I want, she, she looked through them and like, I want this one, I want this one. So she can make a collage photograph, uh, collage of all the different pictures of Raja but I mean there's like certain things that she did I mean here's to give an idea of how my day started okay or how my days have always started I'd wake up early in the morning because I need to go to the bathroom and lots of times my waking up wakes the dog up so now I gotta let the dog out so the dog can pee and sometimes poop and then I try to get back in bed and she's lying in my spot. And there's, and unless you really would really push her, like, come on, come on, get out of my spot, she would not budge. Cause she's like, no, this time is my time with mommy. You need to get out of bed and you need to stay out of bed. So that's something that's gonna be ch have to change for us. I mean, I don't know, um, Miss Sibley's always been on the weekend. She always sleeps in. I don't know if she'll be sleeping in anymore uh, because she's going to be so used to, after I get in bed, feeling the cat, like the cat would like lie next to her and like just like pat her, like, like paw her back or her thigh. And uh, she's not going to have that in the morning. She's not going to hear that morning purr, like an SMR slowly w rising her out of her slumber. So... I mean, these are things that we've, that we've, that were just part of life. It's not something we dealt with. It was just part of life. And it's done, and it's, it's not there. So we're going to have to readjust to a new life without her. But, um, and when I, when Miss Stipling and I got together, um, Raja was a very shy cat. She was like, Okay, so you're here all the time. Okay. Well, mommy likes you, so uh, I guess... Okay, and she slowly, she slowly warmed up to me. And here's the thing, I am not a cat person. And I think that's what she kind of liked with the fact was that, like, I'm not, like, trying to gain her acceptance. It just was like, okay, this is a cat. But she grew on me. Uh, like I've said... Or my post um, she never lied in the corner until I put up that magazine rack and for some reason when I put up that magazine rack that kind of became her corner and that's the reason why after I'd get a new crowdfunded book I would lots of times after I instead of doing a book review I'd simply put the put the book in the bottom row of the magazine racks so was closest to her and if she lied next to it and did what she normally did, then I knew that she was, I joked and said, well, she's accepting of this book. She's the CG guard cat. There's only two books, crowdfunded books, that she wouldn't even go near the rack. One was uh, Cecil's Cash Grab, and one was uh, Clint Holinsky's Superiors. Nothing against either one of those creators. Just She didn't like it. Whether the, whether the printing material, she didn't approve of it, she didn't like the smell of it or what, but no, she just, when those two books, those are the only two times she would never go near that rack. But I mean, I remember starting taking pictures, uh, Graham, when Graham had Alien Alamo released. Uh, I have pictures, I have a picture of her curled up on the floor next to Graham's Alien Alamo. So, and it's just like everything else in the world. I mean, so it's like, like she used to like lie. She used to like go sit in the middle of the room and then lie on her back, 
and she'd be like, give, look at you like, rub my belly, rub my belly. And like, so it's like sometimes you'd like lean down and you'd rub your belly and sometimes you just reach down with your foot, you'd reach over with your foot and just start rubbing her belly with your foot. And she'd be like, ah, I like that. And then when she wouldn't like it anymore, she'd just get up and walk away. Just like a typical cat. Um, you know how when you'd at, tell a dog to, you know, you teach the dog, sit, beg, roll over. You know how like, they do the beg? How they sit up on their hind legs and their, their front paws are up in the air? She used to do that. If she was trying to see if, like, who was on the couch and she couldn't see, she would sit up like that. And we called it prairie dogging. Because she kind of looked like a little prairie dog when she'd do that. And she'd look, and then when she's like, okay, mommy's the one up there on the couch. She'd then jump up on the couch and she'd curl up between mommy's legs. And last time mommy would have a blanket. She would paw the blanket to get it to a certain spot. And then she'd curl up into it. So, I mean, like I said, these are things that we got to get used to not being there. But we're, I mean, she was a very beautiful cat. Um, she really came to her own after the asshole cat was put down. I did not like the asshole cat. That's the reason why I can't remember what the asshole's name is. I just referred to him as the asshole. Um, but no, I liked Raja, and I'm going to miss her. And like I said, I am not a cat person. And the worst thing is, is that with what happened was when we got news that asshole was going to die, we, the, well, he's, got, he's going through kidney failure. You got about six months uh, and then before he dies. So we had six months to prepare ourselves to say goodbye to asshole. It's like that's the last time asshole's going to be doing this. This is the last time asshole's going to be doing that. Um... We never got the chance to do that with Raja. Um, it was all of a sudden, one day, Raja all of a sudden was sick. She was throwing up. She was uh, pooping all over the place. And that was three weeks ago. And in some ways, it's like we're very happy that it was went quickly for her. But in that selfish manner, it's like we didn't get those six months to say goodbye to her. We didn't get those six months to have those last time cuddles um in fact uh, uh the last week of her being alive i wasn't sleeping in bed i was sleeping down on the couch um because that time in bed was when mommy really got a chance to spend when she spent time with mommy and we tried first sleeping in bed but the thing was because here's okay so we'd have the bed and we'd have to put a blanket down because she'd be pooping. So having two people trying to curl up on one side of the bed while she has literally half the bed because of this blanket just wasn't working. So I was like, look, we're not going, this is your cat, this is your baby. I'm not going to sleep in bed. I will, I will sleep on the couch this week. And then, so that way you have your, this week with her. Um, so like last last night, I slept in the bed for the first time in a week, and I there was no animosity, no jealousy. That's something I wanted. I wanted I wanted Miss Stippling to have those last mornings uh, with Raja. So, um, and the thing was about Raja, what kind of made her special was um, Raja was a long-haired cat, and uh, uh, Miss Stippling's mother is allergic to long-haired cats. So she never got to have one as a little girl. So she got when she was going to school in Philly, and she was at a party, and someone's like, hey, we got these kittens if anybody wants them. And she was like, and is it, are any of them long hairs? And they're like, yeah. And so she went, and she got, she, that's how she got Raja, because she wasn't living at home anymore. She could have a long-haired cat. And Raja was a beautiful cat. Um, if you go into my Twitter, you'll see them. She uh, she had some Maine Coon in her, and where we really, when I knew that she was definitely had Maine Coon in her, was after the asshole cat had died. She started to have much more Maine Coon tendencies. Uh, a big uh, tendency of Maine Coons is uh, primarily in the evening or at night. 
she would just meow, uh, just meow at the top of her lungs in the middle of the night. And I was like, yep, that's definitely, it was like, I've watched videos of Maine Coons. And yeah, that's exactly how it was. She had part Maine Coon in her. And it was not just that, it was also like how the cat would have the tufts coming out of her. They'd have these like tufts of hair that would frame up her head, uh, which most, which, uh, which a lot of long hairs don't have, but it's uh, indicative of Maine Coons. So uh, that's where I also really knew that she was part Maine Coon. Um, so yeah, I, and I just, I, 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 I said to uh, Miss Stipley, I said, look, I said, look, we've both agreed that once the critters are gone, no more critters until we have a new house, a new bigger house. But we didn't get the chance to say goodbye to Raja. And so I said to Miss Stipley, I said, look, you were not ready for this. You weren't ready. You didn't, we're not giving any time to prepare for this. Um, if I come home and there's a new cat, meet me at the door. Or if she tells me out of the blue that next weekend we're traveling to this place to look at cats because uh, they've got they've got Maine Coons. I'm not going to say no. Or I'm not going to say no, honey. We said we promised that we weren't going to get any more cats until we had a new house. No, the answer to be like yes, honey. Okay. Um, that's her. That's if she want. If she feels after a week or so that she needs to have a cat again, we'll be getting our cat. I won't say no to her. Because, um, like I said, I mean, I, I'm not a cat person, but yet I can understand the desire to have a cat again and it's not a matter of oh we lost our cat our cat died we'll just replace her no 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 so, um last bit of news and this isn't news this is uh this is thank yous thank yous to everybody on twitter who uh get sent me your condolences whether you sent me a uh whether you simply said yes yeah, said something on my post or simply like the post. Thank you very much. Um, it meant a lot. Um, I showed it to Miss Stippling last night so she could see it. Because, um, I mean, that's, I mean, it felt, I, th I think she felt good for how this community, who she doesn't know, how warm they've been how warm you've all been with saying we're sorry for your loss it, losing losing a furry friend is is, is 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 hard and is miserable um so many people have liked it thank you very much um to those that uh said something again thank you very much um from those who are who i know are cat people to those who are not cat people, thank you very much. So, uh, I'm going. To, I'm not going to read off uh, any of the comments made from people or uh, acknowledge or really say anything. But you guys know who you are. Um, I'm not going to put any uh, links to campaigns in this video. It just it just seems tacky. So, but no, thank you very much to everybody. Um, This community is a very giving, supportive community. Um, we saw it last year with uh, Sean when his mother died. We had that art auction to provide funds for him to help with his medical bills. Uh, we saw it with uh, Aaron's birthday and everybody coming out just to say hi and wish him a happy birthday. Um, this is the community I know. This is the community that makes me really enjoy being a part of you guys. And uh, I hope when you are going through a situation like this in your life, that if I know about it, I also uh, will reach out to you in kind, whether it just be a like 
or whether it be a uh, a comment saying my condolences to you. Uh, it thank you everybody. So hey, I'm going through one of those days where guess what? <laughs> I'm going through one of those days where life is stressful. But I'm just gonna take it all one dot at a time. <laughs>